So I've had a lot of people contact me this morning, sending me links to the new Unreal Engine 5 early access video demo. So I thought um, I'd have a look at this video with you guys and do a bit of a reaction. So this is the first time I've seen it, so let's check it out. When setting out to make our demo, we wanted to push the boundaries of what's possible with UE5. Man, Play, look at the lighting. Next-gen hardware specification. That, <laughs> that looks like a photo. In real That's time on straight up a photo. And Xbox Series X. The fire maybe didn't look completely real, but the terrain looks amazing. Okay, welcome to the brand new UI in Unreal Engine 5. While a lot of the same features and functionality that you've come to know in UE4 are still present in the new UI, We've added several new systems that put you at the center of the experience. For example, the content browser can now be accessed like a drawer using hotkeys, allowing you to keep a clean workspace while still having access to all the that content <laughs> that you need. We can also collapse and restore editors. If anyone knows what that's from, from that's from Space, Odyssey, Space Odyssey 2000 and you're see a lot more of the UI as we get by um, into this Kubrick. But we can't wait for this you to get a bit of a, a reference there. Now, one of the I main think. features of Unreal Engine 5 is Nanite. Our virtualized micropolygon so this system I heard about artists to create as much geometric detail as the eye can see handling all detail transitions seamlessly Jeez, without that. any additional setup in other words nanites lets the artist create while the engine does the work switching to this nanite visualization you can see individual triangles wow. rendered out as different colors here in the viewport and because the geometry is now virtualized you can feel free to place assets like these all throughout your scene to fill out a massive player space Using this debug view, you can see individual instances represented by different colors from swatch to swatch. Very artistic. <laughs> Each instance in this environment contains around 1 to 2 million triangles, providing enough detail for the camera to roam with complete creative freedom. Now, UE5's new anti-aliasing solution, Temporal Super Resolution, keeps up with all this new... Reminds me of the one of the opening scenes in Metal Gear Solid 5, if you've ever, ever played that game. That, wow, like that's just, that's that's reality, right? That realistically reacts to your scene is what opens the door to more dynamic worlds and immersive gameplay. Lumen is our fully dynamic real-time global illumination solution that immediately reacts to scene and light change, making for more believable experiences. And the GI hooks in directly with our time of day settings, allowing for true physically based setups for photorealistic environments. The Megascans library has meticulously calibrated physically based services and objects in the thousands of assets as of today. And the assets that we're highlighting here show just how powerful it, like it is Mars. to have Nanite and Lumen working in tandem. Also, thanks to the new Sky Atmosphere system, it is incredibly simple to quickly simulate realistic time of day, carefully arch direct really volumetric cool. oh clouds, goodness. and make modifications to things like atmospheric, like sun position, and fog. And for this example, we wanted Beautiful. a fully dynamic scene no light baking, and realistic interpolation between the different times of day. Of course, when in development, having access to high quality... I'm so impressed with how fast this technology has, has moved in the past few years. It's terrifying, really. ...part of the Epic Games family, we've made the full Megascans library free and open for all Unreal Engine users. Nice. Bridge, our online browser for Megascans assets, has historically functioned as a standalone application for quickly exporting assets in bulk directly into the engine, albeit separate from Unreal. Today, we're happy to announce that Bridge is now natively integrated directly into the engine UI. Now you can simply drag and drop assets directly into your scene for a more intuitive and connected experience. I'd like to see something like maybe different, uh, something more lush. They're showing a lot of these rocks, which is really cool, but I'd like to see some jungle. Well, but then again, we see a lot of that too. Always with like Unity, they always show these jungle scenes. Called mega assemblies. Mega assemblies are the natural next step for us in removing even more barriers for artists in crafting their worlds. By combining existing assets from the Megascans library, our artists mega are pre-assembling elements okay. that can be quickly accessed and leveraged to populate your scenes. So it sounds like they've using the Moab set. Let's add an assembly. Scan these and models like from that, real terrain using one of these um, laser scanners. In our map. With UE5, we are reimagining what collaboration looks like for teams and projects of all sizes. A common challenge when collaborating on large worlds is deciding how to structure map content so that everyone on the team can easily work without asset contention. 
while also avoiding painful Jeez. merge conflicts. A new system called World Partition. You know, you compare this stuff to PlayStation 1 or PlayStation 2, things within the past uh, couple of decades, and it's just like, what the hell? As a series of streaming levels, World Partition allows teams to think of a single map as one large world that gets broken down automatically into many can Just imagine this with um, VR combined together when that technology finally comes together. To save on edit time resources, allowing artists to only load up the sections of the map that they need. On top of that, changes to actors in a world partition map are tracked at the actor level, not the map level. This one file per actor approach empowers different team members to work on different actors in the same map without having to worry about their changes getting clobbered in a merge or having to revert to get someone else's edits. Now, this approach means you could have artists lighting, set dressing, and reworking the landscape simultaneously, all within the same virtual okay, space. Okay, show me something different. Okay, we've got a person. Ooh, here we go. Managing this much content at runtime yeah. typically requires a ton of thought about how to stream relevant content in and out to stay inside performance budgets. Fortunately, World Partition handles that as well. At runtime, only the cells in a user-defined radius from our player are loaded. And as we move, new cells are streamed in while cells it's no really longer cool, needed but are replaced by their lower resolution, it's very, hierarchical level. It's very AAA or in terms version. of the implementation. All projects have different requirements the cell size and I can't really imagine an indie developer really leveraging this kind of stuff. But then again, another feature that comes along with World Partition is data layers. Data layers are a way to categorize map assets and collectively enable or disable them when you want to alter the state of the world. Working in data layers, a separate group of artists was able to assemble a mythical reimagination nice. of the environment with more interactive elements for our demo. Give me some more of that. Some nice medieval architecture, some medieval At ruins. Runtime, we can swap between these two modes, streaming thousands of actors in and out and enter into the dark world. Let's see this in action as we go back to Chant. Let me guess, more cliffs, more rocks. Thanks, Galen. Okay. Many runtime and interactive frameworks it's like and the Nether Realm are from Mortal Kombat. In UE5. One thing we've added for animation is an experimental new full body IK solver, which is designed to give you better results with less work. Here, yeah. you can see it in action as the rig for our player character, Echo, corrects itself to adjust for yeah, variations that's on cool. the ground below her. It's deterministic. So, so the feet kind of move and the, uh, the legs the and kind of adjust to the terrain games. underneath it. We've also added a new framework called Game Very Feature cool. Plugins that will allow you to build and ship game content in a more modular way. With Game Feature Plugins, numerous core gameplay features can be built in parallel with better encapsulation and finer content organization. Game feature plugins allow developers to add activation instructions to so many panels. game functionality, register new input actions for players, and interface with other frameworks such as animation. See the Unreal and Unity. When we shift it into the dark world, we also activate both have this <laughs> to give Echo a UI complexity activity. where you can get lost in the. Oh my! All of the God, assets that was cool. Do that again. Including new animations, input controls, blueprint code, VFX, and audio are contained inside this plugin. And core game classes have no idea that these assets exist until we activate it. We've also added a feature called Animation Motion Warping, which allows you to manipulate root motion animations to adapt them to the world. Echo's vault animation was authored okay, to the specific Okay, vault animation. Here problem. we go. Leveraging motion warping, we were able to add notify states in the vault animation asset that can react to transform data passed in via blueprints. This allowed us to reuse the same animation to vault over other assets of different it's dimensions, cool, like these pieces of debris. But I feel like we've probably seen this kind of technology system. already triggering the vaulting in other AAA the games that have their own up she jumps, um, proprietary she engines. Move to get to the other side and where her feet should land. Motion warping then adapts or the not. motion maybe it's, the vault animation. Maybe it's something new data. that also, other engines have been faking. Animation. We used motion warping to place Echo in the perfect position in order to ensure her hand would always touch the rift. So on the topic of animation, Unreal Engine 5 also includes our in-editor rigging tool, Control Rig. So this kind of fidelity, you know, you'd expect from you know, games like Uncharted, Uncharted 4. You know, these are AAA scale productions. So if you're a in solo indie developer, 
it's it's kind of entertaining, but how much of it is going to be useful to, for your um, you know workflow is that's another thing. We partnered with Aaron Sims and his group of talented artists to concept the dark world and to bring it to life through an enormous mythical adversary. Now every single animation for the ancient was authored wholly in engine wow. by the Aaron so they're Sims animating it within the engine sequencer, our linear cinematic that's animation cool. tool. Also, just to push the boundaries a bit, they even built it out of a collection of nanite meshes totaling over 50 million triangles attached directly That's to the That's a skeleton. lot of triangles. Holy crap. Control Rig was designed to keep artists close to their creations without having to bounce That's back That's not going to run on mobile, guys. <laughs> allowing them to quickly iterate, all inside Unreal. Jeez. While imagining the battle between Echo and the Ancient, we wanted to give the creature a heavy laser attack that Echo would have to avoid. We needed it to track Echo's location in here the Here we go, here we go. Come on, particles! Show me! Oh, yeah! Oh. Really Taking cool, advantage really of cool. The full body IK solver mentioned earlier, we were able to influence the direction and distance the Ancient reaches out during the firing ancient. animation, based on where Echo is in the scene. Let's see the results. Here is what the base firing animation looks like. It's pretty cool. And here um, it is again. The with shader the full body on the middle. Post process layers enabled, and our info about Echo passed into Control Rig. With full body IK and Control Rig, designers and artists can now author fully dynamic animations yeah. that react to gameplay without having to build complex. IK, FK. I learned about a lot of this stuff when assets. I was studying, but. In Unreal Engine 5, yeah. we've completely overhauled the audio engine, centered around little medicines. um a new secret. I was every sound effect in our wanted demo. to become a 3D Metasounds animator at one point in my early career, but then I went audio into game development, indie game development, procedural game audio. With full audio synthesis capabilities and a rich audio function library, Metasounds give this stuff though is probably practical. It seems so complicated when they explain Using it like this. We built like, the look at this. Laser this is like one of those puzzle of games where you have to follow the, the wire. It's um, <laughs> But again, if you're using this every day, I'm sure um, this is your domain. How it was set up. This is your field of using expertise. Mixer, but let's isolate and play just the synthesizer. I almost part. feel like you could dedicate someone's career around this one system. Or well, maybe not career, but... This Definitely a job. By using a handful of sound wave generators and multiple modulation. But you know that's often the case in AAA. You know you have now, these um, specialized sound samples jobs the final that again. you know an employee will work within one lighting panel or system, then offload their work to the animator. All right, let's take down the ancient. Cool, you know, like often that kind of stuff is now, done in cutscenes with um, demo on some of the new uh, pre rendered stuff, but that was uh, done in engine in real time. Particles that was really cool. Effects, chaos physics, blueprint visual scripting, and more have also received numerous updates in Unreal Engine 5. Plus, all your UE4 projects can be upgraded to UE5, so you won't have to worry about forward compatibility for what you're working on now. Here at Epic, we are passionate about building great tools and new technology. And a big part of our be excitement is being able to bring you, the developer community, on the journey with us. So today, we're making an early access build of Unreal Engine 5 freely available on the Epic Games Launcher. And the For Unreal free? Engine so you can explore and test out these tools yourself to get an early look at what's coming later in the you full release of UE 5.0. <laughs> how else is also, anyone going to try it? we're releasing the project source for Valley of the Ancient, so you can check out how we use these features to build everything That's you've good. seen in today's demo. You can pull apart that demo scene. We've got a series demo of scene. dive conversations on these topics lined up for Inside Unreal, our official weekly live stream, where you can hear from the engine dev team and ask your questions. Now, these are still the early days of UE5, and you can expect more news and features to be announced as we move closer to a production-ready release targeting early 2022. Follow the Unreal Engine social channels for more okay. information. And so, very impressive. I mean, just the... I, I guess what they're primarily showcasing there was the the animation and the IK, IK inverse kinematic um, rigs and how we can adapt to the environment. That whole last sequence with the big... Uh, ancient boss was very much showcasing that specifically in case you missed that 
because all the other aspects of that kind of uh, scene, you know, shooting particles at a boss, you know, I mean, let's be real, we've, we've seen all that already in AAA um, games before. It's nothing too groundbreaking there. But I guess it's about the little details around the animation and how it reacts to the energy blast and things like that. Um, really cool. I'm, I'm impressed. And to be honest, I'm always impressed with anything that um, all these tech demos that come out, you know, um, whether it's the Unity um, showcases or the Unreal showcases. And, um, you know, historically, Unreal has always been the one that is known to look really um, real and realistic and the fidelity is always meant to be really impressive but you know in recent uh, versions and years unity has also started catching up with that so that kind of distinction um, that hook that unreal had you know where it looks so real out of the box it's becoming a less and less uh, a point of difference between other engines but still they um, i believe they have the edge in that fidelity high fidelity department where out of the box you can get this kind of hyper-realistic uh, graphics where you can get that same effect with Unity, but you've probably got to uh, do a few things first, you know, maybe download a few packages and, and bolt a few things on. Anyways, guys, see you in the next video. Bye for now.